Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. This year's Six Nations is underway, and I've got Elko here, a very happy-looking Elko, to talk through France versus Ireland. Elko, how are you? Bonsoir, mon ami! <laughs> Where's that red wine from? The same place, the espresso. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a Pinot Noir, my friend, Pinot Noir. Wonderful stuff. Okay, so obviously the uh, France Ireland match has just finished. Uh, so we're going to jump on and dig straight into it um, right away. But I mean, just give me a quick kind of overall feeling about the match, Alco, from your point of view. Well, look, I I I hate as a man, I hate being wrong, um, but I, I love being wrong when 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 Ireland do well, uh, and I've had a lot of heat, a lot of heat from from our podcast uh, and predictions. Um, it, it, look, it was it was some game for different reasons. Uh, I mean, th the quality of the game was way down on what we've seen these two teams produce before. Let's be fair, um, but it was still a uh, like a mad mad international game. Um, I, I think the bottom line is, frankly, France didn't turn up, but they were on. I think I texted you they're on GMT time. It's it's. It's weird, and and we've spoken. You know, I'm a, a a big believer around sports psychology. I don't know what was said to that French team beforehand, but you know, uh, Willemse got punished, and probably I think probably should have got red first time around. But there was loads of high tackles going in in that first five ten minute period, and they they were they were just taking shots all over the place, and it was strange. Um, and I thought maybe that that red card would settle them down, and they concentrate concentrate on the basics, but. I think um, they'll have to look them look at themselves in the mirror, and um, a lot of guys didn't turn up. And on the flip side of that, the Ireland work were Ireland were really really good, um, and I'm delighted for um, for for our new ten. I think it, I, I I thought he was okay and poor at times, but he came through, um, and he was cool enough at the end to be throwing dummies. <laughs> Um, and and you know that could have gone really badly wrong for him tonight. And you know he missed one in front of the post. He was getting kicks blocked. He made some mistakes, but he's come through it. You know, and and um, cool as a cat. Future is bright. The future is orange. Green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean on Crowley. Yeah, it was far from a perfect performance, but he nevertheless lost confidence. Like he always seemed to still be taking the ball forward. He still seemed to be on his game. So to come through that in a fixture like this, and with that result, that's got to be incredible, I think, for his confidence in his game going forward. Because he will get better. Like, you know he's got, like, some of the kicks that he messed up, you know, just not quite the right option, maybe, and certainly not the right execution. Um, I'm thinking of the chip through in the first half, early in the first half in particular there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was I was, I was uh, chatting with a pal of mine in, in the States, uh, James Brown. Now, not the... Obviously, I wasn't talking to uh, through some kind of um, weird dead person. Um, James Brown played played for uh, played for London, London Irish for many years at ten and Worcester, uh, and uh, at London Scottish. And he was a good, good pal of mine, and I worked with him at, at Scottish. And we were we were dropping some texts back and forth, and he was saying he 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 looked like he he wasn't used to the the timings. It, it, it was too fast for him, certainly at the beginning. But that's okay, you know. That's fine. <laughs> Friday night under lights in, in Marseille is going to be fast, right? Um, but he 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 stayed at it, and and I mean that that bit of skill for Ty Burns try was sublime, like just beautiful. <laughs> Sean Edwards won't be happy, but it was just lovely. And he has so he has that in him. We he, uh, what's really great for Ireland looking at that is like. He's he's got you know Finn Russley type you know mercurial talent and if we can just get all the other stuff around him and and get the other fourteen players knowing what he's doing, we're going to be okay. We're going to be really good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's go through the sort of a timeline of the game a little bit. First fifteen minutes, I thought was kind of slow, kind of stodgy, very little flow. There was a bit of a kicking battle going on, but both teams were happy to play with the ball as well and and play a bit of possession rugby too, but. Not really very much happened until uh, they, Ireland got into some flow and Gibson Park scored a really, really good try. Uh, and I think it was about that time that Valenta got his first yellow card, which I think we both agree could potentially have easily turned into a red. Is, was that what you thought? 
Yeah, I did. I thought he was in big trouble. Um, I, uh, and I didn't realise we were doing bunker, to be fair. And, and even the fact that I went to bunker, I thought, oh, he's even in more trouble. The fact, the way he reacted, uh, and I don't know what coverage you were watching. I was watching um, ITV in the UK and David Flatman called it straight away. <laughs> he was like, he's relieved he's got yellow. He knows. He knows he was he was, he was was too tall and, 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 and he had... Um, yeah, it was. Uh, we, he was. He was. We spoke about it um, doing doing the pod for the for the preview. Was we were you know we were saying that he was going to come out and try and try and go for McCarthy and and you know this young pup and and um, it wasn't him he targeted, but uh, yeah, I, I, Sean Edwards will be so upset with with that. You, you've and, and obviously he compounded it later on by by doing it again. Yeah, there were some big swings in the first half though. Crowley missed that penalty in front of the post, as you mentioned. The dropout then got kicked. McCarthy dropped it immediately, which turned into a scrum, which turned into a scrum penalty. So what could have been 13-0 to Ireland ended up being 10-3. And at that point, you're kind of like, is that going to be a really big moment in this game? Because up until that point, McCarthy was the best player on the pitch by a country mile. And it was just suddenly like, would that, him dropping the ball, which led to a big sort of swing in points, you know, change his character? Would he uh, um, be spooked by that a little bit? But we didn't see that at all. He just carried on as he as he was before. Fair play to him. He was he was absolutely superb. Sometimes you build these kids up, and the occasion can can get a bit much. You know, you, you'd almost expect him to do what what an experienced player in Willemsa did, but he was very good. I think he, he gave away. W- one penalty actually that I thought was a bit harsh when he when he swam around in the second half, but on the on the mall. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and look, it was uh, as an Irish fan, you're there going, "Is this too good to be true?" Like they're not playing that well, and and we're playing we're playing okay, we're playing pretty good, and we're taking some opportunities, and and we're ahead, and and then the, and then he kept going, but we're only a little bit ahead, and we know that what this French team can do, they could score two tries in three minutes, less ninety seconds maybe. Um, and so it was always like, I know Driscoll again on ITV this evening. He was he sort of said at halftime, it's like, you know, we've we've done so well, we've been completely dominant for th- bar the first five minutes. We've been the only team in it, and we're only seven points up. How does that happen? And so that was the that was the scare, I guess, for, for as an Irish guy watching it, going, oh please, you know, we sh- we should have been way way further ahead in the first half. They, yeah, they poor, well, that man. was the they were poor. That was a swing, but they did have their moments. They did have their periods. And the, the period of play that led to the Peno try just before half time mm. must have sent shivers down Irish spines because they got momentum in the game. They found some little edges, used some power. The crowd got up. And then as soon as they got fast ball, Jalibert just put in, uh, in Peno on a fantastic line. And he just, Lovely well, for line. me, I was suddenly, I just kind of, I lifted up then because I thought the game might be fizzling out. But as a neutral, I went, ah, oh, great. Okay, if we see more of that, then we're going to have a really competitive second half. And yeah. it was for two minutes, I'd say. <laughs> France, got themselves, <laughs> France got themselves a penalty. Uh, Ramos bizarrely missed it. And then Ireland Couldn't went believe the it. End. Yeah, yeah, wild. And then Ireland got the other end. Uh, some fantastic play from... Um, God, oh, 13. Who, uh, remind me of the name. Of Ring Rose. Uh, sorry, Ring Rose. Uh, Henshaw. Oh, oh, great, great, great play. Great Did a little, yeah. little inside outside feet, and yeah, he was. To be fair, he was also. And, and what what we thought might, or what I thought might happen with with with, with France attacking him, and I, it just didn't. It never. They never had any ball. I, I, I know I joked to you earlier on. Did, did Jali Berger get injured in the in the warm up? But I mean, literally, I heard his name twice in the whole game. He's one of the best tens in in in, in Europe in the world, and you just didn't hear. They just had no ball, I, and I, I'm trying. I need to look. I've had a few. I've had a few glasses of, uh, of rouge, um, and obviously, when you're in the moment and, and you're sort of talking to people and you're oh, up and down, you miss stuff, right? So I need to watch it again. I need to look at the the two yellow cards. Um, I, I need to understand what was. I need to look at the scrums. I need to. Was, was it Ireland just completely strangled them and didn't let them have anything, or or were France like just really shit poor uh, on a Friday night? Yeah, I think it was a combination of both, you know. I think France were just off it. 
they seemed a little bit flat in attack to me. They didn't have people piling onto the ball when they get a little edge, or rarely. They did a couple of times, but rarely. Um, but also, Ireland's defence was suffocating. They were up and kept moving forward, and there was a couple of turnovers where they held people up, turned it into malls, uh, and things like that. So I think it was a combination of the two, but France were definitely off for, for a lot of this game. They were. I, I thought uh, Ireland's discipline was really good because Carl Dixon is he, he's he's uh, I think he he can get emotional within it. I think he can get tied up in a game, and I think he he look he's a he's an ex player. He wants the game to flow. He wants it to be a spectacle. I have no problem with that. And there's always that danger where a, a one team has got an, a red card, and you're looking for more yellows now i know uh palm got one um for the try uh probably probably deserved it to be fair um but they were so good they were so clever in in what uh, particularly at rook time they were very disciplined he was clearly going to be hot on hands on the floor and i thought we were really clever i think any times we had hands on the floor we we were looking where he was so if he's on the left and went down the right particularly with doris um, but yeah, I think discipline was was it was a was it was a huge thing, and and where where France probably clearly, uh, you know, didn't didn't get the memo at all. Yeah, and well, France did have this other moment, this brief moment again in the game where they got a few penalties, got the all try that you you've spoken about there through Gabriel Arg and Omani getting yellow carded at the same time. It's now a seven point game again, and you know, middle of the second half, it's all looking up for grabs and. Yeah. Again, this is another potential huge swing that just didn't play out at all. Ireland got hold of the ball again, just calmed things down, really. They just played some sensible rugby. And I think what you said there made sure they didn't give away any penalties themselves and got two penalty kicks to the corners, two more tries, and then uh, the game's done. And it was ballsy, right? Because I was thinking, take your points. And I don't know whether it was him saying I don't fancy it <laughs> let's go to the corner or or as a man he going no let's let's squeeze these guys and uh, and push it uh, and it, and it, and it worked out um love to see the mall line up mall being so such an effective weapon for both teams to be fair and I thought France were extremely clever the way they rope adoped Ireland in a, in a way because if I was playing uh, I would be thinking they're not going to try and drive us with one man down, particularly such a mute uh, in, in the guy that was off in Vimsa. But they they kept going at us and getting a lot of mileage out of out of driving malls. So that I mean that that's a that's a good sort of point from them. I mean I I don't think they'll I don't think they'll lose another game, in France. I think they'll be so angry. I think Sean Edwards will be pulling people's heads off now after that game, and and there'll be a, a very have to be a very honest review, and I think they'll be they'll be very dangerous going forward. I think they'll simplify their game, and they'll just beat people up and get wins on the way through. But um, yeah, they were, yeah, they were a bit poor. Yeah, I mean that's the only downside to this game, really, that that France didn't show up. Otherwise, you know, there was lots of good contest points, and it was um, plenty of drama really in it as well. Still, um, one other player I'd like to pick out is uh, Gibson Park. I just think. The way he plays is so important for Ireland, just fizzing around uh, the yeah. speed of the ball that he gets and just choosing the right options so often and so quickly. I think he's so important to the way Ireland play. I agree. I, I think he's he's special, but he's he's playing well. And, you know, some have said, oh, you know, age profile, and all that stuff, but Farrell's sticking with his men. And I love his relationship with, with Lowe. Um, you know, when they're looking to exit, he always finds them. And then, you know, Lowe's got that, that sort of, Extra set left foot that just whacks the ball. Um, but you're right, the speed of ball, he's so he's so quick to get the ball gone. Our, our Ireland's rook accuracy is is the best in the world. I've got no doubt the speed of ball. And when they get in behind it, it's only they they're so good that they can hit one off runners. And the defense isn't normally if you hit one out runner, you're in trouble because they're gonna get turned over. But if you watch the the the, the French defense are only only just getting into set position. They're almost not inset, and they're 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 not balanced. So they get that little, you know, that little side on or, or a little bit of foot, foot movement that gets them gain line, and then and then who's on the ball again? And they don't need five people rooking; they need one person rooking, and the ball's gone. It's so fast. So once they get in behind, really, really impressive. 
there was a few players. I was just chatting to the rugby wife in, in Dublin just now. We were sort of looking at who would you who would you pick out? I mean, all fifteen were good, but I would. We're we're, do, we're already doing lines watch. We're like, what's <laughs> what are we looking at? You know, Farrell's picking it. I know it's another season away, but we're like, you look at it and you go, she and a hooker, um, McCarthy, um, Doris, Gibson Park, um, and Low, I think, and Keenan is the most underrated player on the planet right now. He that our fullback is, he's quiet but he's bloody good. Really good player. Yeah, and what do we think about France? Where do they go from here? Do you think there's going to be wholesale changes? Do you think they'll they'll drop a load of players, or do you well, think they're going to say, right, you boys go and fix what you messed up? <laughs> well, even without suspensions, I'd probably be dropping films <laughs> as much, as much as we we built them up on on uh, during the week. But I'm sorry, like. It's really harsh, but with my with my players hat on, I'd probably give them the benefit of the doubt. With my coach's hat on, I just I I wouldn't be able to make eye contact with him. He was once okay. The second one was really bad. Second man in, assist tackle. He's got time there, and he's 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 tried to maim the guy. So, uh, but also, you know, even even if he hadn't have got sent off and he played average, uh, you've got to pick the. The kid Spigalagi. I mean, Jesus, he's an absolute man mountain. I, I would, I would have him in, and I wouldn't do much with them really. I, th- I think go back to what I said earlier. I think you, 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 you get him in a room tonight. You get the beers out. You have a fight, and you've got you, you've got a bit of a break, right? And I, I would do a massive contact session on Monday or Tuesday. Get it all out of the system. Um, get Sean Edwards there and his in his budgie smugglers shouting at them, whistling at them, and. Right, and then and then, and then go again and simplify the game the the game plan and be really tough and aggressive and show up because they didn't show up and I, if I was in Mar if I was in Marseille paying money to go that I would have been oh it, it kind of reminded me of England last year at some stages in the in the Six Nations um they look like they they look like a, a shadow. And it's it's weird. I, I they they played kind of like how I thought Ireland might turn up. I hate to say it, and there's a few people that I know on Twitter were saying we could be in for a hiding tonight, and it was completely the other way around. It's 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 weird. Oh, one other thing about this game as well that I wanted to talk about was the stash. A little bit of kit watch going on. What did you make of the white hoops on the Irish socks, Alco? So really weird you say that because I I I. I saw that as well, but then I Crowley, I think, had hoops, but I saw other players were all white, or well, it definitely wasn't strapping. No, no, it wasn't. Either, it was listen, fast. well, they were lovely, they were a love, it was a lovely sock. Uh, and <laughs> I would love it, I would love a pair of, of, of socks if anyone wants to gift gift them to me. They're lovely. I don't know whether this is included in Stash, but I did notice that. Um, <laughs> and again, I need to re watch what happened, but I noticed Ty Pern lost his scrum cap at one stage and I'm pretty sure it got ripped off by somebody who was, was just this blue thing in the middle of the pitch for ages and I saw his young youthful head um but I think it got ripped off. But yeah I love a love a white hoop on a on a green sock look great. Celtic Celtic days. Okay then summing up I think it was a good game but compared to the previous two years it didn't it didn't quite reach those heights. Uh and but then it would have been a real struggle too. The previous two years have been absolutely epic. Um what final thoughts from you Elka? I agree, and obviously there was also the the whole hangover of the the the, the two be- to the the two best losing quarterfinals that that could have gone on, and and maybe there was a bit of like oh, we want to show you, we want to show the, the southern hemisphere that we're you know our rugby is great, and you know the 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 the, the, the Heineken Cup or Champions Cup is is the best thing, whatever. Um, it wasn't to be, but the beauty about rugby is, and listen, we we've played in and 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 uh, sort of coached games where it's six three or nine three or whatever and they're the best games ever so i don't mind that the, the, i still think it was a great you know occasion um i would I, it must it must have been great as an irish fan to to have been there but yes quality not quite there more from the french team but but a but a cracking game and a cool friday night opening to to the opening weekend of the, of the six nations 100 percent completely agree with that okay but what do you think at home what did you make of this game? Can you think of any reasons why the French just 
didn't show up for long periods. Uh, did, any players that we've missed that you think had a real key involvement in that Irish victory? Let us know in the comments down below. We'll join you there for a conversation and give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. It just helps other people find it, you know, which is all good. And subscribe if you haven't already. So, Elko, go and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you very much. Cheers, TT. Have a nice evening. Okay, you can subscribe there. Watch that next or get out and play.